Animals. There are an estimated 8 million plus different species we can name and count living on Earth today, not to mention a possible 50 million others that scientists believe are yet to be discovered. Us humans are just one of these. As they inhabit the ocean, land and sky, our non-human counterparts surround us literally and also visually. From drawings on cave walls, stories, books, metaphors, nursery rhymes, toys, religious scripture, to films, video games and advertising, in today's saturated media landscape, representations of non-human animals exist somewhere between a story and real life. They are a hybrid, a digitised, artificial and often anthropomorphic version far from their original form. Anthropomorphism is the attribution of human characteristics to a god, animal or object, and their inhabitancy in the visual culture of advertising is of great concern to many people. Some argue that these representations are rapidly becoming the norm over non-human animals in their natural context. That is to say, we see them more on screens or in paper than in real life. Conversations on the ethics surrounding this point out that by saying Animals can live anywhere is to say they live nowhere. We are removing them from their natural context and using them as tools for communication and economical gain. To imagine that animals think like humans or to cast animals in human roles is a form of self-centred narcissism and almost pathological failure to register the wondrous variety of the natural world. Furthermore, this manipulation and exploitation is widening the gap that exists between human and non-human animals, a gap that deems us superior and in charge. Philosophy argues this hierarchy is merely a social construct, enhanced by the media, which should be interrogated and changed. Another side of the argument suggests animal metaphors that children are exposed to from very early on in life is the starting point of creative thinking. For advertisers, using non-human animals is an effective tool because in contrast to equally striking images of humans, age, race, class and culture are less likely to interfere with the message, especially in today's global arena for mass communication. Non-human animals in advertising are being used as storytellers, spokespersons, mascots, legacy, or even reduced to a single logo. In a Nestle ad for Nesquik chocolate milk, we see the Nesquik bunny performing human acts with human-like facial expressions. This is very much an example of anthropomorphism. When comparing this completely digitised version to a real rabbit in a natural setting, one can begin to understand the immense control we have over entire species. Essentially, they become puppets used to do and say what we want. They are so useful in advertising because we w attach these images with culturally constructed pre-existing meanings. The integration of animal symbols in brand communications serves to activate and connect associations automatically in consumers' minds without explicitly stating them, thus achieving pos positive brand identity. As always, the line between ethical and unethical is somewhat transparent, not only because non-human animals have no language we re recognise as legitimate, but also because there is no rule book that exists for advertisers to adhere to. In his book, An Introduction to Animals and Visual Culture, Professor Randy Mullamud says, The ramifications of visually framing animals sees humans exercising their power over them as they please, with no perceived consequences. He talks about how a more ethically accurate stance in our relationship to animals should challenge the omnipotence of our visual access to them. Per definition, at least one of the following four criteria has to be fulfilled in order for anthropomorphism to take place in a commercial. The criteria are as follows. 1. The ability to communicate like a human being. 2. The ability to express human emotions. 3. The appearance of clothes or other accessories. and 4. The ability to do human things. Perhaps advertisers should limit their anthropomorphic representations to just one of the above, if any. Alternatively, should advertisers only use realistic representations of non-human animals or even limit it to real footage? A starting point would be for advertisers and consumers to be more aware of the possible ramifications. Of course, further research and evidence-based theory regarding these ramifications would help to initiate positive change if it is in fact needed.